Guys, good morning once again. Rooster in Tennessee. Lots of radios going out today. Uh, four or five of these all the way 955s. And uh, they all get double checked before they go out. Try to keep them, you know, the performance pretty close on them. Make sure you don't have anything crazy going on on sideband because that is the one thing you have to be careful with on these 955s. Once you start doing the upgrades to them, things can change in the radio and you have to go on the service menu and adjust some things out. But uh, this one's acting good, doing good, uh, very strong. I think you guys will be pretty impressed with how it does. I do have one all the way 955 left. So uh, generally these sell about as quick as I can get them in. Or let's say that I have, you know, a dozen of these coming or half a dozen of these coming. Um, the majority of them will be sold and paid for before they even get here. So I strongly encourage people to use the prepay option on these. Uh, however, I do have one in stock right now, so you don't even have to prepay for it. It'll ship out this week if you buy it. That's at the time of this video. So uh, one all the way 955 left. This one in particular is uh, for Mr. Will. So this will be his radio. Again, no one else paid for a video or anything. So uh, I just picked a random one from a random customer and I figured we'd do a, uh, a video on his radio here. All the way 955. So let's start... You know, we usually start out on AM. Let's start out on sideband. And again, you guys can change certain things in the menu on these radios. If you want them to do a little bit less power, you want them to do a little bit more power, there's things that you can change in the service menu. There's things that you don't need to mess with. I always like to put that out there. So no one is forbidden from getting into the service menu on these. But if you get in there monkeying around, just know what you're doing. Uh, I generally write down the settings for every radio. So if one comes back here and it's haywire, I'm probably going to know that you've been in there doing something wild with it. Okay, so we'll start out RF power wide open. And this is one of the things I talk about when you're doing the upgrades to these. They can start running away on sideband. They'll start doing crazy stuff, oscillating, uh, trying to throw a carrier and stuff like that if you don't, if you don't readjust them, recalibrate them in the menu. But uh, 250 lot slug, average power. Oh. Hello, about 60 or 70 average there, 75. Again, you can turn it back where it does less. Sometimes we set them to 50 or 60 average, sometimes a little more. Uh, PEP, audio, one, two, three. That's, that's getting with it. Audio, one, two, three. That's probably a little bit more than I'm used to seeing out of one of these. So this one's getting with it pretty good. That's at 14.8 volts. And of course, we are using our uh, upgraded power cord on it. So about 125 PEP used to seeing about 115 out of them. So this one's doing really well. Um, current draw the way it's set up right now. Audio, audio, audio. Try to keep them around that 10 amp mark. Hello. You know, somewhere between eight and 10 amps. It's generally a good sign on sideband with the RF power wide open. Now, if we want to go to AM and uh, test it out there, let's go here, 250 watt slug, top scale. What we got there? What was that, about 10 watts or so? And we can go ahead, we can probably go into the menu and bump that up a little bit if we want to. We'll just have to set the... Uh, the AM high power, we'll turn it up a little bit. I'll probably adjust that on up to about 20 watts before we ship it out on high. Hello. But I mean, even from there. Hello. Over 50 average from 10 watts. Oh, yeah. Actually, about 60. We put a little bit of voice into it. Okay. PEP. Audio, one, two, three, audio, golly, bomb. Audio, check, one, two, one, two, three, audio, check, one, two, three, almost 150 PEP. So this is one of those cases where I wouldn't say, yeah, I guarantee you every one of these is gonna do this much power. You just get one every now and again that goes wild and, and does a little bit more than the rest. So this one is definitely doing a little bit more than what I'm used to seeing them do, but uh, it's definitely getting with it. The only thing I'm gonna change before we uh, Ship this one out to the customer. I am going to go into the service menu and change that AM high power to where he's got a little bit more dead key on high. And heck, while we're doing it, let's just see what it does halfway. Oh, it still swings good. So 
Yeah, we can change that on the high power. I mean, on low audio, it goes all the way down. Still swings about 25 average. But uh, we can definitely change that for him and uh, make sure it's got a little bit more carrier. Not that he'll probably ever need a 20-watt carrier on AM. Um, probably won't ever need more than 10 to 15, honestly. But uh, for people that like to run the radio by itself, you may find yourself wanting to run a little bit more, uh, a little bit more carrier out of it. Okay, so uh, that's it, everybody. 14.8 volts, real strong, uh, all the way 955. Like I said, I wouldn't sit here and make a guarantee that all these all the way 955s are going to do this. Usually somewhere between 115 and 125 PEP. And again, there's other factors once you get it, you know, what you can expect it to do. Different watt meters, if you're running less voltage, if you're not running a good power cord, that is definitely going to hurt the output of the radio. Um, but still doing a really good job. 50, 60 watts average. Um, they won't do that until they have all the mods done to them. Final upgrade, AM regulator upgrade, average power slash modulation mod, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, all that equips to a, a, a badass radio. Thanks, everybody. Rooster in Tennessee, roostercb.com. One more of these available um, on the website. All right, everybody have a good one. See you, bye.